Welcome home, Mr. Larry. I hope you had a pleasant journey. Yes, thank you. It was very nice. That was brave. Anyone would have done the same. I doubt it. Or there'd be bodies up and down Fifth Avenue. <laughs> Are you a Van Ryan? Almost. Mrs. Van Ryan is my aunt. I'm Marion Brooke. Oscar Van Ryan's cousin? Yes. Oh, you're not as he described you. I'm Larry Russell. Ah. Well, you'd better tell him to keep him under control in future. Nobody can keep Pumpkin under control. Not for very long, anyway. Miss Brooke. Mr. Russell. Come this way. But you are made of sterner stuff. Ah, Larry. May I present my son, Larry Russell, Miss Marion Brooke? You're neighbors. You should know each other. I hope the little dog recovered from its shock. His near demise, you mean? Don't worry. He's very resilient. I guess I'm a bit early. I don't think so. You see, Miss Brooke, my father's dollars do not always have the desired effect. Usually, but not always. You don't seem to mind much. I don't. These things should happen naturally. Unlike my dear mother, I'm not a big believer in forcing change. Then I suspect she and I have more in common than we do. <laughs> How are you enjoying living with your aunts? They've taken me in, so I should be grateful. But we seem to disagree on so many topics that I'm sure will come to blows in the end. <laughs> Perhaps they'll educate you, you'll educate them, and you'll meet somewhere in the middle. Hello, Miss Brooke. Hello, Miss Russell. Have you met? Yes, but you mustn't tell my aunt. She wasn't here long, and I suppose Mother's made another quarrel. I'm afraid I can't stay either. I just wanted to look in to pay my respects to your parents. I hope we can meet again. I'm sure we will. Let the three of us be friends, in spite of everything. Contramundum. I don't think he means well at all. No. No. And I don't blame him one little bit. One hundred dollars, Miss Brooke? I feel I should say five, and we could transform the whole endeavor. But I'll take one. Can I help with packing it up? Oh, no. I'm enjoying myself. It's not every day you watch Sherman marching to the sea. Yup, Larry. You better go. Sherman's leaving. Miss Brooke. <laughs> Mr. Russell. Miss Brooke. <laughs> Miss Scott, my aunt's secretary. How do you do? What are you up to in an architect's office? You can't be planning to build another house. And we can meet where I built our present house, opposite you. I know. Are you making changes? It seems very splendid to me. No. I'll tell you if you won't give me away. How intriguing. I'm interested in a career in architecture. I've been talking to Mr. White about a job. I thought you were a banker. Don't you work for your father? Banking is part of it, but also railroads, steel, real estate. Won't that bring you into contact with architects? Not enough. I want to train properly and build up a practice. I applaud your enthusiasm, and I envy your freedom. My freedom may require work. Oh? <laughs> and I'd be grateful if you didn't mention this to my parents. My father's been going through a tough time, and I don't want to make it worse. I promise, but won't Mr. White say something? Uh, he's going to help me persuade them. At least I hope he is. That's a brave man who contradicts his own clients. And that is why you must wish me luck. I do, most sincerely. <laughs> now I'll bid you good day. I'm expected at the office. He seems nice. I don't think he is nice. Here we are.
Cheer up, Mr. Russell. It can't be as bad as all that. Can't it? I've quarreled with my father, or at least we soon will. Is this over architecture? How did you know? Because you told me that day outside Mr. White's office. Uh, you must give your father time. He loves you. He won't want to fall out. When my father loves Miss Brooke, there is a price to be paid. He cannot deviate from his ambitions. Mother, me, Gladys, we must all keep to the steps he has laid down. You have one life, Mr. Russell. If you take the wrong path, you will pay the price for many years. And now I must escort Pumpkin home. Good day. Harry Russell and I are catching the ferry and train to Newport. Well, I'll come and see you off. Good day, Mr. Russell. Hello, Miss Brooke. It's nice to see you, but I'm afraid I must tear your cousin away or we'll be late. I gather you're off to Newport. Father can't get away, but Oscar and I are joining Mrs. Fish while Mother and Gladys are coming tomorrow to stay with the McAllister. Mr. Larry. See that he gets them. Who is that? My father's stenographer. She helps his secretary, Mr. Clay. Let me just give these to church. Thank you very much. Mind you, look after your sister. You're right. Oscar's a determined suitor. But he'll have to get past my mother, and he'll need all his tricks to do that. I can believe it. Have a good time. Miss Brooke. Miss Brooke. Mr. Russell. Larry. I mustn't hold you up, but I have a favor to ask. Would you bring these across the street before 7 this evening? Could you manage that? Uh, certainly. And then you've got your ball tonight. Uh, I just hope it doesn't betoken some desperate action on your part. Some action, yes, but not desperate. Thank you. I wonder what Miss Brooke is up to. She is quite convincing when she makes a decision. It was she who said I should tell you about my plans to be an architect. Should I be glad of that? I think you will be. In the end. This is a great city in a great country. At a great time in our history. I want to be part of it, Father. Not to show her off. How are you feeling, my dear? Just dandy. Never overestimate your own power, my dear. It's always a mistake. If it's a remit of Charles Fane. We open the house. Miss Brooke. You promised me a what? I saw you talking to Mr. Riggs. Oh. Yes, he's just someone I used to know. Let's dance. Do you think Mrs. Astor will accept your hand of friendship? No one would believe it, but who knows? Well, that's all for tomorrow. <laughs> Tonight for the bell of the ball. <laughs> goodbye here? I think I must be allowed to see you safely to your front door. Especially after tonight's bruising. I shouldn't have told you. Of course you should. How do you feel about Mr. Rakes? <laughs> I'm not sure. Rather numb. Really? Numb is good. Just look after yourself when it wears off. But I really came in to ask how you were feeling. 
What do you mean? When the new rector told us about Mr. Rake's marriage. Oh, that. It was a little bit of a shock, but I'm fine. Or I will be. Good. Because you have so much to look forward to. I'm sure of it. I did love him. I'm glad you use the past tense. It helps to accept that a thing is finished and done with. The question is... What's next? The right man will come along. But I don't just want a husband on data. And anyway, who says he'll come along? He doesn't always. If he didn't, it was his loss. Good night. Sleep well. And dream of all the wonderful things that are waiting to happen. <laughs> are you a tennis player, Mr. Mott? I used to be, but I'm... Mm -hmm. Do you spend a lot of time in Newport? My parents have a place in the town, and I usually try to get down from McAllister's casino party. Oh, look, Mr. Russell. Ah, uh, yes. Excuse us. Larry! What are you doing in Newport? Staying with my cousin, Mrs. Spain. What about you? I'm working here. I wondered why I hadn't seen you, but I'm glad if your career is really getting started. Yeah, it, it's a baptism by total immersion. I'm overhauling one of the famous cottages. Wish me luck. Of course, I will, but I'm sure you don't need it. Oh. Who's this? Uh, Mrs. Blaine, my current employer. May I present our neighbor in yes. New York, Miss Marion Brooke. How do you do? Larry's been teaching me the rules of the game. <laughs> you couldn't have a better teacher. Excuse me. Who is that? Poor Miss Brooke. I wish your friends wouldn't try to pair her off. She'd have plenty of suitors without their help. rather stay. That's good to hear. Come into the drawing room. Where were you all night? At Mrs. Blaine's house? Was it a party, or just the two of you? <laughs> Do you really want me to spell it out for you? I want to know what you think you're doing with a woman twice your age and ill-suited for you in so many other respects, I haven't got time to list them. I like Mrs. Blaine. When there are countless charming and suitable young ladies for you to pursue. Susan Blaine is a decent woman. Decent women don't sleep with men young enough to be their son. This one does! Keep your voice down! <sighs> Die. Please, Larry, you're making this more difficult than it needs to be. I think it needs to be damn difficult. What prompted it? Tell me! Was this because of my mother? Do you want me to take her on? Because I will. Don't. It won't be any good. Then what can I do? Nothing. There's nothing to be done. We had a fling. And we enjoyed it. <laughs> At least I did. Now it's time for us to move on with our lives. Here I was thinking we had a future, but no. Goodbye, Larry. Look after yourself and please try to be kind when you think of me. Wait! Take these for me, would you? Miss Brooke. Mr. Russell. What a surprise. I thought you were spending the summer in Newport. Unfortunately, my plans changed. Unfortunately? You don't want to hear it. But I do. It wasn't very original. Lovers meet, lovers part, boohoo. I know how that plays out. Of course. You told me the night of Gladys's ball. And now we're even. Twin sufferers on the cruel carousel of life. <laughs> 
Let's be comrades in arms instead. <laughs> Where are you going? Just to the park to get some flowers for my painting class this afternoon. I'll come too if you'll have me. So, what will you do now you're back in New York? Well, no doubt Father will have some ideas, but we'll see. Rook. Oh, what is this? <laughs> I moved back to New York to see Francis settled in my old hometown. But to my surprise, fate had plans for me, too. I never thought I'd find someone else to love, to stand by my side, to care for my daughter as if she were her own. We are here to celebrate what my family has done for the botanical gardens, but my family is not yet complete. I realized that soon after I met Miss Brooke. Many of you here are friends of Miss Brooke and may have been puzzled by my invitation. The truth is, I have invited you to witness this. Marion Brooke, will you marry me? Bravo. Bravo yeah. She hasn't accepted him yet. She will. <laughs> Is Aunt Agnes right? Will you? <laughs> Dashiell, well done. Well done. John told Mrs. Bower I'll have a tray in my room. Yes, ma'am. What's happening? My aunt's husband has been taken ill, and we hoped we could nurse him here, but it seems not. I am sorry, especially when you ought to be celebrating. Why? Because you're engaged. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. This news has rather driven that out of my head. Please let me be of help. Thank you. I'll remember that. What do you think of this one? It's pretty. They're all pretty. It just feels wrong when Uncle Luke is so ill. Mrs. Forte won't grudge it. She's glad you're engaged. They wouldn't come to the luncheon otherwise. Was I right to accept him? Well, only you can answer that. But he seems a nice man. He is nice and kind, and a good father, and all of those things. Are you trying to persuade yourself? It is tomorrow. Then I'll see you later today. Miss Brooke. How was your evening? Well, the fireworks were astounding. Oh. <laughs> you must have seen them from here. Have you been crying? My uncle died last night. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank you. It doesn't seem fair when Aunt Ada is such a gentle, kind soul. I mean, I wouldn't even be here if it weren't for her. She was the one who sent for me from Pennsylvania. I should thank her. <laughs> Heaven knows I never would have been able to manage Aunt Agnes without her. Perhaps I should get you inside. Oh, no, I can't go back in there. Not just yet. Might a walk help a little? Get some air? Thank you, Mr. Russell. You're a good friend. An invitation to, and I'm very much afraid it will annoy you. Why would I expect anything else? Agnes. The Russells have asked me to their box at the Met for the opening night. The Met? Is that what we are now to call the Metropolitan? I'd like to go. Which Russell has invited you? I hope it wasn't the son. Mrs. Russell asked me. 
So my niece will be in the enemy camp. I want to see the new opera house. I'm still. Oh. I'm glad to find you alone. I know we haven't seen much of each other lately. I understand. What a terrible blow you've all had. Will you go on teaching? I'll be dependent on it. Aunt Agnes can't continue my allowance. Well, it won't be for long. We'll stop when we get married. Well, I thought... I want you to have a lovely life of entertaining and clothes and <laughs> babies, eventually, and no work at all. That would please Aunt Agnes. And you, I hope. I just need some time to think. Of course you do. I'll say your goodnight to Agnes. Are you ready? Francis is in the carriage. The thing is, Dashall, I've been racking my brain all night. Well, I hope this turns out well for me. I'm afraid you won't think so. Because... I cannot marry you. What? I can't be your wife. It wouldn't be right. I'm sorry. But I thought you loved me. I thought... You love Francis. Because I don't think we want the same things. Or even the same life. I want a life like everyone else's. But I don't. Or not yet. I, I want to do some good in the world before I settle down. But one day you'll meet a woman who's not just a temporary solution. And who actually shares your dreams. I want that for you. But I am not her. I suppose that means you've told him. Told him what? That you can't marry him. <laughs> how, did you, how did you know? He isn't really right for you. You knew it, and so did I. It's your own data. Hello. Ooh. Tonight, Mother will calm down. What if she loses? Win or lose, she's got to be less mad than she's been lately. Your mother knows what she wants, and perhaps that's the trick of getting it. You're very philosophical tonight. I was reminded of something Aunt Agnes said to me. <clears throat> Still thinking deep thoughts? <sighs> Not exactly, but Aunt Agnes is right. It's time I took control of my life. You do know you're a marvelous person. I know it's kind of you to say so. I mean it. 